What is up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new year of Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I've got a ton of absolutely disgusting pitches for you from opening day, but before we get to them, please remember, hit that subscribe button, join Ninja Nation, and don't miss any of the great content we'll be putting out all year. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. Without a doubt, the filthiest pitch of the day was this Bohemian Rhapsody curveball from Matt Brash. Mama, he just killed a man. Yes, we have ourselves a fatality. And it's not just any hitter. That's Jose Ramirez in the dirt. Talk about breaking some ankles. I think this is the point where I leave my helmet, cleats, and bat at the plate and just walk out of the stadium quietly. Because I ain't playing this game no more. As for my starting pitchers, Dylan Cease was disgusting. Cease had 10 Ks in six and a third innings with a filthy array of knuckle curves, sliders, and fastballs. And this home plate view really drives home how hard it is to hit against elite pitchers like Dylan Cease. This is a 98 mile an hour elevated fastball and a ridiculous knuckle curve from a home plate view. If you have any friends that think hitting a baseball is easy, be sure to show him this. Cease was up against Fromber Valdez, who had this wicked curveball and had five innings of shutout baseball. I had mentioned Cease struck out 10 hitters. There were three other pitchers who strike out 10 or more hitters yesterday on opening day, and that is the most in MLB history, according to Sarah Langs. Since 1901, the only other time that four pitchers K'd 10 or more hitters on opening day was in 1970. And we're about to get to one of those pitchers who K'd 10 or more yesterday, Shohei Otani. Otani had 10 K's in six innings, giving up only two hits and no runs. Not only did he hit and pitch in this game, but he also called his own pitches. My man could do everything. The filthiest pitch from Shohei were these sliders that broke 22 inches horizontally. Look at these absolute frisbees. And sometimes the center field view doesn't do them justice. So check out this home plate view of Otani facing last year's first round pick, Drew Jones. Look at the break on that. Drew Jones called it a frisbee and said it hurt him to stand in the box. And his dad, Andrew Jones, just laughed at him. I love these touching father and son relationships. And here's an overlay of Shohei's fastball and his slider. And you can see what makes this so tough to hit. They look the same. You have to make a decision and you end up swinging at nothing but air. I know watching Shohei dominate is ridiculous, but the most ridiculous thing I saw in that game yesterday was this no look grab by Hunter Renfro. Absolutely crazy. When you impress Shohei with your athleticism, you've really done something. Garrett Cole struck out 11 hitters in six innings, giving up no runs, and broke the Yankees' record for the most strikeouts on opening day. Just an overpowering array of sliders and fastballs. He outdueled Logan Webb, who had 12 strikeouts in six innings, but did give up four runs. Marcus Stroman had a great outing with eight strikeouts and six scoreless innings, giving up only three hits, thanks to his cutters, sinkers, and sliders. And Stroman had this absolutely chalk sinker. I mean, if we're going to call pitches painted if they touch the plate, if they're all over the chalk of the batter's box, we go with chalked. And we need robo-umps. Shane McClanahan, one of my favorites for the Cy Young Award this year, had six Ks and six scoreless innings thanks to his overpowering fastball, wicked curveballs, and change-ups. And here's an overlay of McClanahan's 99-mile-an-hour fastball with an 85-mile-an-hour curveball you can see what makes him so tough to hit. Hunter Green had eight strikeouts in three and a third innings and absolutely shoved. He threw 44 fastballs of over 100 miles an hour in this game, which is the second most in the StatCast era, only behind himself. At one point, StatCast had one of his pitches registered at 105.2 miles an hour, which had the internet all going crazy except... This one ended up being a velo misread, because occasionally the Hawkeye cameras can pick up some anomalies. But for a second, everybody believed that Hunter Green threw 105.2 miles an hour because he threw nothing but flames all day. After the game, I did a compilation of Hunter Green's 100 mile an hour fastballs from this game, 
and it lasted two minutes. I'm not going to subject you to that, but you can check it out on Twitter if you want. Luis Castillo had six Ks in six scoreless innings and had this fantastic K strut on this 90-mile-an-hour changeup. Castillo has won a Pitching Ninja K strut of the year, and who knows, he may get another one this year. He battled Shane Bieber, who had three Ks in six scoreless innings and was, as usual, Shane Bieber's self. Blake Snell had nine Ks in four and a third innings and looks to be a force this year. Zach Grinke had this pretty 74-mile-an-hour curveball. Pablo Lopez debuted for the Twins and had eight Ks in five and a third scoreless innings. A couple of big matchups had some disappointments yesterday. Thought Mad Max versus Sandy was meh. Max did have six Ks in six innings, but gave up three runs, and Sandy only had two Ks in five and two-thirds innings. But that game was not as disappointing as Jacob deGrom versus Aaron Nola, where both of them gave up five runs. Speaking of disappointments, Max Fried had two Ks in three and a third innings, but had to leave the game early due to a tweaked hamstring. It looks like he'll end up on the IL for a little bit, which really sucks. Now on to my filthiest relievers. We already touched on Matt Brash at the beginning of this video, who had undoubtedly the filthiest pitch of the day. Other filthy relievers were Yuan Duran with his 88 mile an hour curveball. I love his little K-skip. Ron Marinaccio had this filth. Jordan Romano had this sick slider. Jordan Hicks had this absolute insanity. Yes, he gave up a bunch of runs, but he did have this 104 mile an hour sinker with 17 inches of run, obliterated Wilson Contreras' knee with this 103 mile an hour sinker, ouch, and got this KO on a slider. It's like when Hicks comes in, it's just pure anarchy. Brian Abreu had this wicked 88-mile-an-hour curveball. And lastly, Jimmy, the human glitch Herget, had this 75-mile-an-hour floating curveball. His curveball floats so much, I bet he can throw it over the mountains like Uncle Rico. Because their throwing mechanics are identical. On to some college baseball, Paul Skeens continued to dominate. Look at this stuff from the first inning of the LSU-Tennessee game. Skeens threw 10 consecutive fastballs at over 100 miles an hour, touching 102. And if you're worried about his off-speed stuff, check out this slider. He also kept this velocity deep into the game, throwing 99 several times in the seventh inning. Imagine having to face this after going to calculus class. Screw that. Lastly, my first pitch of the day... That goes to Megan the Stallion. What a savage first pitch. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It's Laz Diaz popping a balloon at the Yankees game. Perhaps the best gender reveal ever. Let's see your robo-umps do that. Diaz, re- oh, he popped it. What's up, everybody? I hope you had a great opening day. My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start with Christian Javier for 6Ks or more. Then take the Jesus Lizard, Jesus Lizardo, for 6Ks or more. And top it off with Robbie Ray for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 